All right, and we are back for the final series of the night. Our last quarterfinal here in the Countdown Cup. And uh, this could be a very close one. The NYXL getting ready to go up against the Guangzhou Charge. Guangzhou been a little bit wonky as of late after getting a victory in the Summer Showdown, be, you know, becoming the kings of the APAC region. Have kind of been slipping off that throne a little bit lately, Wolf. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of changes. We've, we've seen a new hero pool come in. Now it's gone. Um, yeah, you know, they did it a lot off the back of Eileen's fantastic Genji play, um, where you know he was able to step over Hawksaw along the way, uh, and then just yeah. outplay uh, a Shanghai Dragons that wasn't really running that much Genji at the time, and outplayed Fleta obviously there as well. But it's a very different meta we're in now. New York has adapted a lot; they've changed their roster. They've added Bianca in, similarly to how we saw Tuyu added to Soul. Sasha's making his own appearances now. The flex tank role that's kind of been the weak link for a lot of these teams is kind of being solidified for everybody right now. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. you know, Krong arguably could be better than Void. You know, a lot of people think that he is. He's possibly the best flex tank in the world right now. So we'll see if Bianca can match up well against him. In terms of our starting lineup, though, for NYXL, yeah. it is going to be Nene and Hoxall in the DPS lineup. Everything else as you'd expect. Bianca will be in. Haven't seen Hoppa yeah. since his uh, recent joining of the main roster. Yeah, and I mean, I, over on the side of the Guangzhou charge, but I'll just, just move through it, because I think both of these rosters are, are pretty stock standard, uh, you know, especially from the side of the Guangzhou charge. Less pieces to work with since uh, Neptuno and Nero are not currently in Korea. I believe they're still... Uh, I think Nero might be back in quarantine right now, or he's flying soon. Um, but either way, you know, they're not available at the moment. They're coming back to be set for the playoffs to come in if they are needed. Um, so unsurprising for the Guangzhou Charge. This roster won them the Summer Showdown. It's been very good for them overall and highly consistent. And NYXL has been finding more success with this Hawksaw Nene lineup than anything else. Yeah, I mean, this is just kind of where we've, we've kind of boiled all the water away, right? Like the, what, what remains is the strongest uh, and best part of these two teams. You know, the core has been figured out and been solved. And I think for Guangzhou, they've solved it a while earlier, whereas New York's made a lot mm -hmm. of changes to their roster this year and over um, over the course of this season, with Hawksall being homeless after the Vancouver uh, split up, and then he comes in, Bianca p gets pulled off the bench, and New York has kind of found their groove with Nene and Hawksall together. Um, you know, Libero's kind of taken a back seat for a little while because they want specialists um, more than they want all-rounder players in metas like this because the metas kind of solidify sure. itself. I mean, we see every now and then a, a weird Reaper will sneak in or you see a Torbjorn <laughs> or sometimes there's like the junk rat. Uh, but we get it. You're upset about Soul Dynasty losing. You know. uh, but, no, but I mean, like, you know, there's a junk rat will sneak in sometimes. No, uh, sometimes you'll see like a Widowmaker come through, you know, a little bit less meta. But otherwise, it's kind yeah. of, you know, you're seeing Genji, Ash, and Sombra, those three, occasionally a Tracer, and everything else is kind of stock standard. So, you're not really yeah. planning for the the poss the extra possibilities. You're not planning for flexibility. You're planning for, I want this to be the best possible roster for yeah. the meta. And that's what New York is running here. Well, we are here on Busan yet again to kick off a series. Mecha base for our first round. And uh, yeah, I mean, NYXL not going for the uh, the Libro Widowmaker McCree this time around. They have Nene in at the start. Seems like a pretty good decision if you ask me. And we'll see if this is going to be enough for them to go ahead and get a victory. Eileen, for the moment, going to be flashing the May for us. With Hawksall on the Symmetra, likely just to you know, push everybody forward and then swap over onto the Genji. Yeah, uh, I think that that's probably going to be the case. Mono does Ooh. tease the Wrecking Ball, which has been very successful for him. Jonax, Zenyatta. Okay, so this is kind of a New York no. special. Very okay. risky. Okay, they are going to be moving forward with this. So, Mono back on the ball. I know a lot of people are going to be happy about this because his Wrecking Ball has looked phenomenal as of late, and a lot of people have been kind of demanding to see more yep. of it and straight away from it in the last couple series, but he's back on it. Let's see how it fares. Ooh, It'll be a bit play. more standard, a bit more uh, defensive here for the side of the Guangzhou Charge with Rio on that Reinhardt. Does receive the Discord Orb. I mean, no one really able to get into a position to try to punish him despite his low HP. Now dashing in from behind. Yeah, he gets, uh, he gets distracted, if Rio does. He does get taken down, but Happy gets the better of Nene. Still going to be a one for one, and Eileen will strike. Gets rid of Hoxall, and he's building up a, a Blizzard very rapidly right now. 65 now, 74% for Eileen. Really fast build time for him. Yeah, the New York Hop is great at burning uh, players down with uh, the big um, 
extra additional damage of the Discord orbs. You know, you end up doing big damage to someone like Ryo. You end up getting that that tank kill, but it's kind of slow and, and very chip oriented. Uh, whereas the Guangzhou Charge Cop is designed to just, with speed boost, get on top of New York's Cop and then just run them over. Massive damage coming out from Rio's left clicks. Eileen, obviously, on the May, getting those slows, making Wrecking Ball's life miserable. So they're going to have a blizzard. They don't get it for the choke, unfortunately. Just a few seconds late on that one, but this is still their fight to lose. Eileen pushing forward, still going to be dropping that blizzard in. Nene will get a headshot, but now Jonak going to be taken down, as is Bianca. Point getting back half at the moment by the NYXL. Can they finish this one off? They can. So do start getting themselves on the board as Chara overextends. Got way too close. Does get taken down. Dragon Blade out from Hoxel. They try to keep him alive. It seems like it's going to be working pretty well. They get rid of Shu. Mono cleans up too with the help of the minefield. And NYXL will be able to hold this out. Looked like Wangshu Charge was going to be able to get a very fast retake, but really good perseverance from the NYXL. Yeah, this is actually really uh, a great turnaround for a New York Excelsior because they pull so many of Guangzhou's ultimates out. They're able to flip the point very early. They get to maintain the, the uh, trance. Now, Guangzhou's just going to change pop up. They're not going to try to slow build a blizzard on the attack here with a fast, you know, flip of the point. They're actually going to look for EMPs. Wild Driver in. Flux catches one. Nanny falling low. The accretion stun on to Hoxall. Uh, somebody needs to save an ammo. Yeah, I think he might be me down for the count here. Okay, he's just uh, Nope, looks like he got back up. But Mono uh, will get taken down. And okay, now, yeah, he just slowly, very slowly drifted away <laughs> into oblivion uh, as it does get taken down. Unfortunate for him. The question somebody is, to come do his aid, but it does not happen. The question is, He's does New York change their comp here, or are they going to stick with what they've got? Jonek I think yes. Tranced? I think they should stay with it. I don't mind swapping over to the Winston here, because that's that's totally cool. You've got Jonek now to give extra support. They're going to have a fast nano boost this way. Like, he, he might be able to get it at the same time as Hoxall, or at least a little bit afterwards. So, I like this change a lot. They're going to play aggressive. They're going to try to build up energy using the Winston, uh, you know, bubbles. They're going to bubble the Winston with Zarya. Build up that Zarya energy. Happy's oh, down. Really nice headshot there from Nene, yeah. Gets rid of Happy. Already a huge pick off the bat. Cole Lesson's going to be coming in, but it's way too late. Three members already gone for the Guangzhou charge. Bionate as well in the Krong. Delays him and stops him from being able to push down with the help of the Coalescence. They cannot further delay on the point. Rio now going to be joining in, swapping over onto the Winston. So Mono going to be having a nice little considerable lead towards that primal range. Yeah, I mean, the choke point control here for New York, not that strong. They have a grab, but I think they want to fight on the point itself. You know, trying to chip away, use Nene's poke damage. And once the point gets contested, that's when they're going to commit the blade. That's when they'll, they'll toss the grab out. EMP shut down here. Oh, man. Yeah, manages to catch two in the front line. Bianca being one of them. Fell low, but does not get eliminated. Graviton Surge comes in. Hoxalt profiting from that. Does manage to get rid of Prong, and now they will pursue a little bit deeper. The right click taking down Shu. The headshot there with the melee so on the well Rio. Played. Cleans them up, and can somebody tag is the question. Char is trying, trying to make his way there from around the back, but yeah, just way too far away. So 159%. A very strong start for the NYXL. Yeah, I mean, that was really well played. Yeah, like I was saying, they wanted to fight on the point. They, they avoid the choke. EMP gets shut down. I mean, it hits two people, but it's it's negligible because the way that the, the fight is set up for New York, the whole team can't get EMP'd. They have better ultimates. They can grab right afterwards, so there's no follow-up for the EMP. The EMP only hits two, like I mentioned. And, uh, you know, they're, they're setting up for a fight where Guangzhou can't fight on their own terms, which is how you want to do it. I've liked Jonak's flexibility from starting the uh, Zenyatta, getting that early kill, realizing, you know, after trance, he's not going to be able to find as much, switching over to the Ana for a fast nano. And now he's playing a third support here in the Batiste. So showcasing his versatility, obviously most famous for Zenyatta, considered a one trick by many, but not really. Uh, no, definitely not. Happy now. Looking for the shot, and then he's going to have his work cut out for him, trying to contend with Happy. He already gets a very nice headshot on a mono, almost leading to his death. He's managed to stay alive, but his HP bar is still rather low. Shot from Nene will force the recall from Eileen, dissuading him from pushing in even further. Collapse now coming in from the NYXL, moving forward onto the tank line to get rid of the immortality deal, and Mono barely stays alive, dropping that bubble down to keep himself safe. Eileen. Tries right, to so get the kill here. Want the Jonak now. Changing his sights to Nene. But just can't quite find the entry, the flank that he's looking for. 
Not quite. Strong right up in their faces. Kinetic Grass going to be coming down, trying to get that shielding through. Happy gets a headshot on the Hawksaw, eliminating him. Kronk is dancing around the pillar, managing to stay alive for a little bit longer. Now with the Immortality Field, and Happy just cleaning people up. Seems like the Guangzhou Charge should be able to get this first cap. Jonek up on top of the drum, just constantly crouching, ducking and diving, trying to make sure that he does not get sniped. He's doing a pretty good job of it for a while, but Happy finds him in the end, and the point now should go over to the side of the Guangzhou Charge. Bianca, a little bit of a weird commitment on the flux there. This is actually, yeah, I mean, that's, that's gonna hurt, but this is actually something I think New York could flip back quickly with a good blade here. Um, I mean, Guangzhou definitely has the better tools. They're gonna have the Flux that Bianca just lost, you know, they're going to have Supercharger, but if Hawksaw can get a backline kill, like if he can kill uh, either the supports, really, if he can kill Chara before that rally goes off, before the Shield Bash goes off, then flip that into a kill on Shu, get those dash resets. This is winnable. I think New York should commit here. You know, they don't want to just bait out Olsen and wait. I think they have a, they can take this high risk, high reward push and look for the commitment of the blade yeah. once Hawksaw gets that last 6%. Oh, well, there's a Flux in. I heard a headshot coming through. Immortality field thrown down by Jonek, though. Keeps everybody in the fight for now. Supercharger thrown in from Rio and Shu will cut down Mono as they try to approach. And that is going to be uh, pretty damning here for NYXL on this push. And now we're just going to have to reset all over again. You can see Eileen showing some restraint. Doesn't want to use a Pulse Bomb, even though he can build it up uh, pretty quickly. Wants to save that for you know the next push coming in just to completely shut down NYXL again. Yeah, I mean, New York, I was talking about how they could commit, and I, I thought should commit with the blade, but Guangzhou Charge actually committed ults first, didn't give New York that fight they were looking for. They fought off the point, they put, played forward, and, and basically played on their terms before Hoxel had that last 4% of his blade, before New York could really react and take that fight. They knew that Bianca didn't have the counter Gravitic Flux. Now this is the fight that New York absolutely must take. They don't have choices anymore. But Guangzhou feels pretty okay because they should be able to delay this to about 99% regardless. So, yeah. good situation here. Been a single pick from Happy. Could shut it all down. Hoxall falling low as the dash away from the accretion would have almost certainly died in that moment. Dragonblade now going to be pulled out. Jumps into the back. He's looking to finish off the Baptiste, but the immortality field is there and it's denying him a bit. Shield Bash will slow things down. <laughs> they push forward. The flip getting ready to come through now for the NYXL. They do go ahead and manage to take over the point. Nice kill on the back end here. Onikron will be traded out by Happy, which Hawksall strikes down shortly thereafter. So NYXL ensuring that there's not going to be a fast turnaround from the Guangzhou charge to just go ahead and close this out. Yeah, Guangzhou's approach here now, I mean, they used Rally early, so that's not going to be an option here. They're going to, you know, have to, I, I think probably, oh, I think gets tracked and taken out there. That's going to be a good start here from the New York defense, but I think Guangzhou is probably just going to have to slowly try to use their Infrasight here to maybe get some information and look for a big Gravitic Flux fight, but they don't have great ults or big combos coming up here soon. So New York, not out of this one by any means yet. They've got a really nice defensive setup. They've got, you know, a Widowmaker who's got line of sight advantage until this moment, right? This is where Happy can try to change that. Starting to push his way out, sees the halt together, gets a nice hit on the Mono as Kron comes in with the Flux. Drops him down to the ground. Supercharger coming out from Mono with the Flux answering now from Bianca, pulling Krong up into the air. He got a decent amount of shielding. They're still trying to focus fire him down. They constantly take him around 100 HP, and Bianca finally with the accretion will finish him off as Shu does get eliminated by Nene. Another halt in, and he's got the shot. Get rid of Chara, and YXL holding firmly. This is, uh, I mean, the line of sight control that it's going to be hard to wrestle away for Happy, right? Happy is trying to find a way to find an angle to find damage. You can see he's looking for these risky pop-up shots because he knows that just trying to, to take it straight up is going to be shooting into barriers, putting himself at risk of getting taken out by Nene. It's really limited options here for the charge. Yeah, already HP bars dangerously low. The immortality field is going to be finished off, and Oxel comes in strong with the blade. Manages to find three. As we hit 90%, this is Dire Straits now for the Guangzhou Charge. They still have a couple ultimates, the Supercharger. The Am Matrix but are they there, there, but they need to make their way over onto the point. It does not look like it. You can see Happy just kind of running away. Eileen barely manages to tag it in time, but that's the last thing that he gets to do. OT bleeding out. They get the Hulk pull onto the Wrecking Ball, ensuring that Rio cannot arrive in time. And map number one, Busan, goes to NYXL. Really, uh, I mean, down to, I think, in a lot of ways, the line of sight control that New York uh, had after taking that point back. And then they had 
really impactful blades, right? Eileen, the big difference in composition, the only difference in composition was the Genji versus the Tracer, right? And Eileen's Pulse Bombs were never able to get the same sort of value as Huxel's multi-kill Dragon Blades each time. Yeah. And when you have a limited amount of ways you can approach a point or a little limited wa ways you can initiate a team fight uh, to take a point back, New York could just sit way back and say, I've got better line of sight. You can't you can't get a Widow uh, Maker pick. You can't kill us with Tracer because we're watching very carefully. Stuns are set up there. Yeah. And so, I mean, New York just kind of wins this slow war of attrition. Well, it's very nicely done from the NYXL. A good start to the series for them. Guangzhou charge. When we come back, we'll have their map pick. We'll find out what that's going to be and see if it's going to be able to net them a victory, put them all on the board to tie up this set one-to-one. -one. They do, do not want to go down without a fight. They want this to be, uh, you know, as close as humanly possible for them. Looks like Eichenwald out of the corner of my eye is going to be the next one, but we'll get confirmation on that when we come back from the break. So stay tuned, guys. Map number two coming up in just a few minutes. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile. And by State Farm. For auto, home, or renter's insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Overwatch League is brought to you by HyperX. Unleash your style, unleash your fury, with HyperX Fury Memory. And by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. All right, and we are back. NYXL starting off this series, our last quarterfinal of the Countdown Cup here in the APAC region with a 1-0 start after finding victory on Busan. Only two rounds required for them to close that out, and overall, pretty convincing look from them so far, Wolf. Yeah, I mean, there was some problems, obviously, for Guangzhou with the comp they were running. If you don't have strong initiation, especially on a really wide map like Sanctuary there, you're just going to have problems getting in and closing things out, right? The first round was a lot closer, very back and forth. Second one looked very one-sided, even though, you know, Hangzhou, or not Hangzhou, excuse me, Guangzhou had that huge lead. Once uh, New York took it back and had the ult lead, it was kind of like, you look at it and you go, okay, like 99 to 0, New York's taking up. Mm -hmm. But when you look at how, or not, it wasn't exactly 0, but you know what I mean. And you're looking at it and you're sure. like, actually, the more I look at it, it looks like New York's massively ahead, even though, you know, they're at 99. <laughs> um, or I suppose like 95 as it was in this case, but... New York just had the better ults. They had they played safe. They played slow. Um, really nice hit scan play from Nene. It feels like this duo of long range hit scan and up close and personal Genji is so good right now with New York. I mean, you have two of the best players yeah. uh, in their roles um, playing together on you know opposite fields of of play. Right, Genji versus an Ash, or you know in this case 
um, Widowmaker, it works really, really mm -hmm. well when you have that synergy. And it's been it's been a little while. You know, New York has started to build that up, and I think they're starting to get to the point where, you know, Happy doesn't seem like this unbeatable force, right, in terms of the Widowmaker at the moment. Yeah, I mean, just once they lost control, the, the reapproach there from the Guangzhou Charge became so very rough that Happy wasn't able to establish this super dominant sight lines uh, that, you know, he thrives in. So uh, wasn't able to get a lot done with the Widow in the end there. Now we shift our attention over to Eichenwald. So Guangzhou Charge, this is their map pick oh. for Hybrid to see if they can tie up the series. Did we just happen to gloss Ready? over the fact that Libero is in? Did that just... Um, kind yeah, of we did. Us somehow, but uh... Uh, okay, so Libero is in. You're right. I didn't see yeah, anything didn't happen see in the either. lobby, so <sighs> we missed that. I'm sure that the graphic ran, so the chat's going to be going crazy at this point about, oh my God, Libero's in, but he's playing support. What? Yeah. Um, so, but uh, yes, he is in fact in, and he is playing Brigida. He was a brig player for New York a lot of the time last year, so it's not a shocker um, or any sort of. Like Revelation. It's I like this a lot more than him playing Widowmaker, yeah. that's for sure. I mean, Huxall playing Brig as well is one of those similar situations. Looks like Bianca on the Zarya here. So they're going to be running this uh, Genji Winston Zarya with Sombra, actually. Not going to be running it with Tracer or an Ash or anything like that. Just going full dive here, New York on the attack. Guangzhou has Happy on the McCree, so that's actually a really nice anti-dive uh, setup here for them. Very good against the Winston. And New York scouted out. And they've changed things up. They're going to go for their own double shield. They don't want to get burst out by Fan the Hammer and the flashbangs here. So they're just going to play it safer and slowly push their way over with the double shield. Happy to get tagged up. That will be all right. Wakes for that. Rank like they come through from a shield to go ahead and pop him back up. Krong just going to be bouncing his spheres through this little side room now. Maximizes damage, and so far it's working pretty well, but as I say that, stun comes in, and Krong just gets evaporated by the members of the NYXL. Now they're going to be charging forward, looking to get this cap on the point in the first push, and with Shu going down, the staying power is so limited now for the side of the Guangzhou charge. Rio will fall. It's only Nene that has been taken out right now, uh, and NYXL, yeah, they explode onto the point. This is going to be a huge time bank for them as they get ready to go into the street space with the Dragon Blade ready to go to boot. Yeah, I mean, this is a extreme speed run. With the comp they're running too, I mean, think about it this way. Remember we were talking about earlier in our previous series about how the Zarya comp does really well versus double shield when it gets on the point because it's sustainable. You know, the, the, the shield tanks are slow. They can't really run away from the Zarya beam. And once the Zarya gets the point, you win it. They did this with their own double shield. So they just kind of pushed up faster and better onto Guangzhou charge. Like, they just outplay Guangzhou in every facet, and now with Guangzhou swapping Eileen onto the Genji, they have a whole extra ultimate up, like you were pointing out. So this is fantastic. It's phenomenal for New York. Amazing start. Yeah. Multiple alts ready to roll. Eileen gonna be trying to get that Dragon Blade online for late swap now. Dynamite. So go ahead, chip away at that HP bar, just waiting for diving in. Matrix out from Jonak looking for some target. It seems like Guangzhou just going to be, yeah, pulling back fully across the bridge now. They're trying to get ready. Drop down comes in, however, off the high ground. And now they'll start pushing forward, but Oxal draws out the blade. Eileen dashes through, manages to find Nene. Looking for a little bit more. Oxal will take down Eileen, resheathes the blade. Now starts pressing forward, just spamming out the right clicks, looking for a target. The rest of the team are going to be the ones profiting, getting the kills here on the board in the end, it would seem. Oxal will get that final one of the cart. Will continue to roll, still making fantastic yeah. pace here for the side of the NYXL. Guangzhou, if they're going to contest here, the problem is they don't really have any mobile heroes to get onto this point. Like, if Krong touches, then he dies, probably. He's going to, if he fluxes in here, it's going to be very risky. They're going to commit, I think. Krong blindly trying to toss out that accretion. Couldn't quite see where Bianca was. The flux does not get shut down. It's absolutely huge. As Jonik will pick up two here on the back end. Five minutes again in the time bank and for the NYXL. Axel, right now, catching Eileen's blade. He's about to lap him. He's only 4% yep. behind. This is insane. I mean, I can't blame Guangzhou for trying to contest there. They just couldn't, they didn't have the speed at which to set up on the point. Unfortunately, the counter rank is too slow. At least Krong saved his flux. And he's got that available now, so that's one advantage they have. You know, it looked like he might have wanted to use it there, but he held on to it. And that's going to come back to, uh, to help them quite significantly here on this defensive C. But I mean, the time bank is massive. The blade is coming. Huxel gets it first. 
Dynamite's pretty decent, and Matrix coming through, and Libero gonna be taking down the Dynamite just a little bit too much. Dueling bombs out on the cart. We'll get finished off by the uh, opposing Genjis here. As the cart continues to inch forward, but the kills start coming in. Doom's gonna be gone, but Hoxall the leads two with one dash. Now get the third as Charo will fall, and Hoxall says no, this is winnable. Puts the team on his back, and they just go ahead and close this one out. The cart now advancing, happy dead. There's two members alive. Eileen, he got lapped. He's not gonna get to use the Dragon Blade. He pulls Hoxall it. just makes <laughs> an after amazing the turnaround out of what seemed like an impossible situation. Yeah. Essentially two dead for New York. He pulls the blade. He knows that the, the positioning of the back line for Guangzhou Charge is split up to where they can't link together. Char and Shu can't save each other. He kills one and then links into the other with the dash reset. The set for the double kill. Let's watch this again. Like, watch this. Okay. Huxel sees this opportunity. Nene is dead. Libero has been dead for a while. He blades here. Dashes for the double. Kills Eileen. I think that was just a bonus. I don't think he even realized that was going to happen. Gets the kill to Chara after Shu is dead. No immortality field to save. Chara, Chara can't likewise then get the follow up to save his, uh, or could, could previously obviously save uh, the Batiste. So Shu gets killed first. Chara is linked together there. And Hawks ends up with, I believe, four kills on that exchange, picking up Eileen on the way through on the first dash. Uh, so. Huxall is like, he's already signing his name on the player of the match uh, line right now. He's, like you said, he, he passed Eileen in the blade, which we were keeping close track of. On the attack. I mean, that's that's very difficult to do. Yeah, I just... Man. That's a mind-blowing moment there. That's 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 a top moment for Huxall this year, for sure. Clip it. Clip it. Put it on Twitter. Put it on the subreddit. Amazing play from him. Happy scouting with the Echo, which would have been a bit of an odd one for him. But uh, we'll switch back over onto the Ash, and Hawksoul's already killed Eileen. I mean, this guy's out of control today. <laughs> okay. <There's one laughs> I guess that's just, that's just it. That's the end of it. I don't even know <laughs> if Hawksoul's Genji ever looked this good on Vancouver Titans last year. Uh, um, I, well, hmm. Now we're getting into some interesting territory with that one. <laughs> I don't know, man. This I is don't domination. Know. I'm not it, it, it's really good right now. I'll just, uh, we'll go with that. Yeah. Right now, no, neither team running the wins is still double shield against double shield. The Guangzhou Charge's win condition is going to be those ultimates if they can get them online. Oxal got crazy kills, you know, with ultless when hit on his attack. We'll see if Eileen can do the same thing. Otherwise, they're probably going to have to wait for those ults I was just mentioning. The flux, yeah. you know, the Definitely bobs. Yeah, it's a slower pace being set right now for sure, but you see NYXL, they're the ones who want to push the limit here. And Ashian, they get the cutoff on a Krong, separate him from the rest of the squad, and do manage to take him down. So, solid little pick off there. And Eileen continues to play around the back. Bob's going to be tossed in. Jonic, however, taking down Char, the Ant Matrix coming through as well. Let's go ahead and finish off that bomb, and the rest of the Guangzhou Charge is trying to retreat. It is pretty deep forward, though, here. Trying to get some staggers, won't be able to find any, but suddenly two and a half minutes now remaining for the Guangzhou charge. Yeah, Guangzhou, the, the big ults they need are the blade, obviously. The bob they, they tossed away, that's something that could build fairly quickly um, on a map like this, but it's gone now. And then you've got the flux that's so far away. And Bianca and Huxall already have their ults, essentially. Then he's going to have his own bob. They're in a great spot here to defend. Here's the blade. Yeah. Blade coming up from Hawks on the immortality field. Oh my god. He manages the dash through with the slice. Insane. Gets another two kills. Another kill on the Krong. And I just, you know, this is just, Actually this is looking insane. like a full hold. It's just looking like a full hold. This is like. This is something different that we're watching right here. Okay, this is actually something unreal. Hawksell's play tonight in this series. Unreal. Uh, the man is, uh, he's, uh, he's ascending at the moment. I mean, we've seen, <laughs> his guy's, his career was started with, with the Genji, you know, he had some some other heroes he got to play throughout the metas, with a little bit of May, et cetera, but like, this is, Hawksaw playing Genji, well, this is something we've never too. seen, I think, before. Like, this is the best I've seen I, from him so far. This is actually I mean, crazy. It's, it's such, it's such a Genji meta right now. Uh, you know, you would expect Hawksaw to, to dominate and to be really good, but I mean, think about, how strong Eileen has been playing on this pick, and he is just looking almost entirely absent right now in this match because Hoxall is one-upping him at every twist and yeah, turn. Remember, this is the Eileen that uh, just won a tournament with his Genji, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's a bit absolutely. shocking. I mean, he shut down Hoxall in that last tournament. Yeah. Hoxall is getting his uh, just desserts right now. 
Okay. Turning things around completely on their Hoxol's head. Hoxol's about to laugh. Gonna be coming in. By the way, yeah, Eileen dashes out. Hoxol gets rid of Krong in midair as he tries to go for the flux. Stun now thrown in. Rio trying to retreat the supercharger. Gonna be finished off. He's just got nowhere to roll. Eileen does manage to find Bianca. Blade drawn out. He's looking for another target. It's way up in the air right now. It's a slice in onto Mono, but just cannot get through that armor nor that HP bar. It does have to peel back, so the blade not going to be netting them much. Shoe commits and the Matrix out two. now from Shu. Yeah. Everybody, yeah, just peels away from the point. 20 seconds now remaining for the Guangzhou charge to try to get on here. Second try blade to get this cap Rossell. coming through. Blade, yep, coming out. They all get halted together. The accretion not going to connect. They do get a shield bash through, but it doesn't matter. They don't have enough focus fire, but there it is. As I go ahead and curse Hoxel, Krom does manage to finish them off, but is that going to be enough for them to go ahead and get this cap? Two members going to be down now. Three mono falling low. Seems like Guangzhou charge here at the 11th hour will be able to break through onto point A. So two and a half minutes getting ready to be added into the time bank now, but they have to, they have to push all the way to the end. Finish with time in the bank. There's four minutes there for NYXL, yeah. but it's such a daunting number on Eichenwald. Guangzhou charge, uh, you, you have to give credit to the supports here. I mean, they they helped keep Eileen alive after his blade failed to find success. So he survived and is now going to, you know, lead Dragon Blade charge in, in relevant neutral for the first time in this map. And they kept him alive. They were able to, to help win the tank war there. And then it kind of outlasts New York Excelsior when Hoxall's own blade oh. went off. On the hunt. Very far forward here for New York. Don't know about yes, this. Yes, it is. Uh, Eileen hunting does manage to find Nene. Gets that elimination. The dynamite coming through from Happy. Giving uh, quite a few many members of the side of the NYXL. Rally's going to be rolling in the already using the immortality field. Pull back coming through, looking for the collapse on the Krong. They do manage to finish him off. This is crazy. A nice little punish. That's going to allow them to stay forward even longer. Had they not gotten Krong, it could have been a really fast turnaround, given that he's got the flux ready to go. Yeah, they're playing Six for ultimates time are nearly too. there, however, for the Guangzhou charge. Yeah, they're buying a ton this of time. This could still be risky. There you go. All right. Well, Hoxel, Hoxel's dead, so that's it. Peel back. <laughs> if they force this through blade, Eileen, too. looking to finish off Libero. If Eileen has to blade here, that's actually pretty nice for New York. I don't think he will. He does. Oh, well, yeah, he does go for it. Looking for the slice. Libero going to be taken down by the Bob. So good little assist coming in. But he can't really follow up on the much. But it doesn't really matter. Happy has three kills in his back pocket. Pulls him out here. And now he's looking for the fourth. And we'll find it as Bianca falls. So they finally break through. Yeah. Four ults used there for the Guangzhou Charge. York should be able to contest, though. The cart's so far away from C. It hasn't, oh, for hasn't sure. touched the bridge yet. So they're going to come out here. Hoxel's going to have a blade. They're going to have a Bob and a Supercharger. <laughs> If Krong's flux is really nice here in the choke, though, they might get their shot to just, uh, you know, close out B. Oxel's actually looking with the rest of his squad to take the other side approach. They know flux is ready. Oh, look Ooh, at the they dive. barely managed to tag in. Yeah, point 0.49 meters left to go as the blade now comes through. Hoxel looking for some targets. Goes way into the back. Gets rid of shoot, pushes back forward, falls low, but they keep him alive. And that will be the hold coming in. The team wipe with 20 seconds remaining. NYXL barely, they almost missed the tag on the cart. Longjo got so very close just then. But now they might not be able to complete it at all. Even if they get this push in, it's going to be a minute and a half to start for the final stretch. NYXL has everything up their sleeve right Bash now. The push away. away coming through. Two seconds remaining. Happy does manage to force the OT. Translocates out. You can see the wrecking ball, just how very low Krong is. Barely lands on that corner. Just gets taken down as Bob is just going ahead. He's just skeet shooting right now. Taking down everybody in midair. And NYXL with a dominant defense on Eichenwald will hold the Guangzhou charge just in front of the point B door. And now we're up 2-0 in this series. I, You and I both thought that this was going to be perhaps the closest set that we had of the night. Yeah. Uh, but this might just be the biggest stop I of the I thought this evening. was going to be the closest set and obviously the highest level uh, between the three sets we saw today. I think it was pretty, you know, pretty reasonable to assume Chengdu was going to dominate the first series. The second series, you know, we thought was going to be probably back and forth, but not at the highest quality. <laughs> and, sure. And, and actually, I think the second series was much higher quality than, than we thought, but... This series, Huxley's just running away with it with the rest of NYXL. I mean, he's he's outplaying Eileen. He's yeah, you know, he's outpacing secondary blades. Like he's getting his second blades faster. He was literally lapping him in several circumstances throughout the map. We're seeing, uh, you know, Krong play well. To be to be frank, I feel like Happy playing well in the support line of Guangzhou Charge playing well, but they're just yeah. not able to win these straight up engages because Huxley is just stealing these team fights away. He's taking fights down four v six. It's insane, and yeah. he's having the series of his lifetime right now. Uh, he he really is. Hoxall is just 
on fire. It seems like he's got you know uh, a fire lit under him at the moment here because of the you know the, maybe because of the MVP nominations coming out. Uh, but I, he's looking just absolutely wonderful on this Genji, and I'm looking forward to seeing some more. Uh, NYXL seems like they want to close this out with a 3-0, and they are very much on track to do so. Another reverse sweep situation now. We saw it from Hangzhou. Now it's for their, their Zhou sister team of Guangzhou. They try to pull off the same thing. We're going to have our game break coming up here. First, though, we'll unpack these first two maps and probably just sing some more praises of Hawksall when we come back from the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile. All right, welcome back. It is time for our game break. And, uh, oh, boy, there's... I feel it's one of those things where it feels like there's a lot to talk about, but there's there's really not that much to talk about, I think, Wolf, because it's all centered around one person, one thing that's been going on in these first two maps that we've seen between the New York Excelsior and the Guangzhou Charge. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the Hawksall show right now. I mean, everybody's watching Hawksall just cut yes. people to pieces. This is not even... It's It feels like it's not even fair. Like... It's, he's not even being pocketed by a Mercy or anything like that. This is not a specific Genji comp. He doesn't even have a Zarya to bubble him. We're talking about double shield Genji, where he's just walking forward with the rest of his team, then finding these backline picks, doing tons of damage. His accuracy is insane. Hoxall is most famous for his Dragon Blades, not really known for his accuracy on left clicks on the, the hero or his ability to build fast Dragon Blades. That was kind of like what Who Are You had over him back in the day when the runaway Lunatic High rivalry was a thing sure. in Apex. So like, who are you builds faster blades, but his blades aren't always as good as Hoxall's blades. It was kind of like the the thing that um, what people would say, which is why it was so amazing when Ru Jae Hung would get those sleep darts on Hoxall. I was like, this is the scariest blade you're going to see. It's shut down. You know, yeah. fast forward three years That's later. That's not happening today. Yeah, three years later, um, you know, Chara is having problems bashing and shutting Hoxall down. Um, you know, Hoxall's finding these, these windows of time where uh, Chara and Shu are opposite of each other, far away from each other, so he can kill one and then the other because they're both um, unable to save each other or protect each other. Yeah. And immortality fields mean nothing because they're just getting focused down so quickly by his teammates. Uh, and, you know, Libero had a pretty nice Brigida game uh, there on Eichenwald. You know, there's nothing bad to say about it, actually. Some nice rallies, some good yeah. heals. I mean... Was it necessary to sub him in? I don't. I don't think so. Was it extremely relevant? I, no, but it was, was that's another nice thing. I mean, you, you could have, you could have turned the names off and told me that was an ammo, and I would have been like, okay, yeah. 
It was fine. Totally fine. I like that Libero has kind of carved out his, his own new niche on this roster right now for this meta, though. Because <laughs> uh, Anamo is yeah. obviously great at, at Lucio, which we see a lot of on Control. Um, it's really good at Mercy. And now Libero is kind of like, well, now I'm the Brig Specials. I played it before. He's kind of carved out his niche again. Um, he's making Hoxall's life a little bit easier. For for the charge, like, Eileen, is he playing a bad Genji? No. He's actually playing quite well. He's just he's not yeah. playing as well as Hoxall. And, you know, New York hasn't given him as many opportunities. Nene's playing really well. Anti-Genji, anti-dive. Anti I can't put any blame on Guangzhou. I really yeah. can't. Well, so I have, a, I have a question for you, Wolf, and this will be our crunch time, uh, is me posing this to you. What do you think charge should do? I'm going to give you two options. Focus fire on Hawksaw and try to do everything, invest everything to shut him down, or try to kill everybody around him in spite of what he's doing? What do you think is the best approach here? I think I think kind of the second one, if I had to choose one of those two options, I think the second one is the better one. Um, I think just kind of deflecting Hawksaw and keeping him, you know, forcing him to dash away, forcing him to be more careful, more conservative with his dashes, for example, like keeping the supports more mm. connected so he can't just run away with things is the better way. If you just survive Hoxall's attempts to, to, to kill you in the back line or, you know, make it harder for him to build Blade, just kind of slowly push him away, then you win the rest of the fight, right? Then maybe Happy, Happy wins the matchup against Nene, um, and then, you know, the tank war goes in favor of Krong, who I think is, you know, slightly the stronger Sigma player uh, in this matchup over Bianca, who's really been doing quite well the last few weeks. Um, I think mm -hmm. if you just limit Hoxall's effectiveness by playing more defensively, then you win the rest of it. You don't have to focus him. You just have to limit his effectiveness. And then I think on paper, the core of Guangzhou absolutely can defeat Mono and, and company. You know, I think Bianca and Mono can lose out to Rio and Ch uh, and Krong, excuse mm. me, uh, in the tank line. I think Happy, if he's given the right line of sight and isn't being constantly harassed by Huxle, absolutely can beat Nene in the hit scan duel, be it Ash, be it Widow. So as long as Hoxel just isn't allowed to roam freely, it doesn't mean you have to focus him or kill him, but supports maybe stand a little bit closer to each other. Maybe Happy stands a little bit <laughs> yeah. closer to those supports. Uh, then maybe Hoxel doesn't get as much done. But it, it's really hard to criticize Guangzhou here. They're not playing a bad game. There's not any glaring mistakes. It's Hoxel's playing so well. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, he definitely is. Let's see if he is going to be able to maintain uh, that level of performance here for, you know, potentially one more map. Guangzhou Charge, again, are going to have their map pick. They're going to be heading to Hanamura. Uh, and again, this could be it. NYXL are looking and they're hungry for that 3-0 finish to move forward. I mean, as much of a statement as they can make with this series is absolutely huge for them because if they win this, they have to go up against the Shanghai Dragons. So they want to have as much confidence, as much momentum behind them as humanly possible. Uh, Guangzhou Charge, though, they need to turn things around. They need to get that wind in their sails. We already had one reverse sweep today. Hangzhou pulled it off. Can Guangzhou do the same? That's the question that we are going to answer when we come back. So thank you guys for watching our game break. We'll be back with the rest of this series in just a few. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheese It Groups. Deep flavor, deep crunch. It's a mind crunch.
Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. All righty, here we go. Could be our final map of the evening here, getting ready to come up. We have Hanamura for, uh, you know, map three in this set. NYXL absolutely on fire. Hawksaw, uh very much on fire, burning the brightest out of all of them right now. Guangzhou Charge just seem like they can't keep up with this guy. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much more we can, like, you know, keep playing the same record, uh, broken record. <laughs> Just player, keep saying like, this over and over, over and over. Hoxall is good. Hoxall yeah. is good. Hoxall is good. Hoxall. Anyone else? Hoxall. Did anyone else see Hoxall over there? Um, yeah. Any truers? Truers? True. But right. uh, yeah. you know, I mean, he's uh, he's looking pretty good. So, I like it. This is. I think it's justified. <laughs> this is not that different from what we saw in our first series, though, where it was a pretty dominant start to uh, the series for Seoul, and then things turned around. I think this is a little bit more dominant. But still, um, I mean, I think I, there's there's a chance Guangzhou could bounce yes. back. Uh, I, this is absolutely, like, ten times more dominant for NYXL compared to what we saw from Seoul in their first two maps. Um, it, it's just, it's not even close. And honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm almost getting Runaway Vancouver vibes, but instead of everybody investing into, like, Bumper into the main tank, it's everybody investing into Hoxall su succeeding and just ensuring that he survives and does his thing. And they're playing around him in that regard. Uh, that's what it kind of feels like, and it, it's making me uh, make me think back to those days. Yeah, this is. Um, I, I don't know, guys. Like, this is <laughs> an outplay on a scale that we haven't seen in Asia, I think, in a, a long while. Um, we've seen some outplays here and there, you know. Sometimes we talk about the flex tank differences and how one player can be a weak link, but um, I. I don't know if we're going to see Guangzhou Charge recover in the mirror. And that's something we didn't talk about is can they change the comp? And they're going to try to show us at least a different variation here. We might still see the Genji. Yeah, there it is. No uh, no double shield. They're going to run the full dive. So very much a clear change for Guangzhou Charge. Let's see if this works out better. New York's still sticking with the Genji oh, Ash. Ooh. Scary moment there from Happy. He just barely got away from that flail. Takes his way into the back, drops down, and now he's just taking his pick of the hack targets. Wants to go for Mono. Manages to find it. Can they keep him alive? The answer's gonna be no. Great collapse there from the Guangzhou charge. Bionate thrown in from Shu as well. It ensures that he does get taken down. Rio makes his way over to the point. Now the rest of the Guangzhou charge is gonna be meandering over as they can. Look for the re-engage instead. It's a good collapse onto Bianca. Bionate onto Libero leads to him getting taken down. This is a fantastic start for the Guangzhou Charge. Exactly what they need to try and turn this series around. A massive time bank now getting ready to come yeah. through. And, you know, the, the only thing that could have gone better for Guangzhou is maybe if the fight went a little bit longer, maybe Happy sits at 80% of his uh, EMP. But, I mean, you know, as it is right now, he's building it up. He's actually playing on B right now. Uh, charging it up. So as I say that, like, he gets the one thing that was missing, he was getting it off screen. The observers didn't catch it, but I saw it. He's up to uh, 99 now. Translocates back. He's with the team. They've got a Nano Blade EMP ready for this. We could see an insane time bank. Here comes Happy. As long as he doesn't get spy checked here, this could be amazing. New York in just a few well, seconds. For him on the high ground. Yeah. New York in just a few seconds will have the tools to stop this, too. So this is a really knife's edge oh. push. Well, EMP out onto three. The Nano Boost is going to be used on a Mono to try to keep him alive. But now a Bionate toss in again from Shu. Bubble does get used. Mono jumps back down over towards the spawn. He keeps himself alive. But here comes the Nano Blade. Bubble out. Bianca cannot stay alive. Gets eliminated. The deflect in onto Nene. Eileen looking alive here. First hit comes in for the side of the Guangzhou Charge. Hoxall has the Dragon Blade ready to go, but he cannot stay alive. No way to mitigate the damage coming in from Rio, and that might just be it. They push forward. Jonek with a Moira trying to stay alive. See that with the recall, and that will just be it. Four minutes and 44 seconds. Make a wish, Guangzhou Charge. It better be for a reverse sweep, because uh, that was an explosive start to this map. Yeah, and that's uh, also a scary number in Asia. It's a, essentially the equivalent of 666. Um, the, in Korean, the hanja for death is the same sa as uh, four, which is sa in Korean. So you end up with uh, kind of a cursed number there in the 444. 
Uh, fun fact also, very true. in uh, a lot of Korean elevators, and you know, Asian elevators in general, if you're watching this replay of old economy gone wrong for New York because they were so behind, um, you'll see an F instead of a 4 actually on the fourth floor in a lot of elevators, especially older elevators. Stigma behind the number. Just some <laughs> trivia for you guys, you know, as we have this 4 4 4. It's like. It's like some hotels in, in America not having a 13th yes, floor. exactly like that. It just goes to 14. But everybody who's on the 14th floor knows where they really are. So if there was actually any kind of danger to being on the 13th floor, then everybody on 14 is just kind of screwed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's just, it's all a big lie. I've actually Break seen hotels the where the 13th floor is actually just unfinished and totally empty. And like you could see like concrete and stuff <laughs> on the 13th yeah. floor. I guess it just depends on the what the architects decide. Yeah. Uh-oh, Huxall on the Reaper. Is it real? Um, okay, taking, <laughs> taking a leaf out of Soul Dynasty's book. Here we go. They're up 2-0, better Let's pull see out how the they, Reaper uh... and get reverse swept. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now I just need Nene on the Torbjörn, and we're all good to go. Map 5, let's do it. This is a really unusual <laughs> pick see. for Huxall, by the way. He almost never plays Reaper. Yeah, well, they want this combination. I, I get the thinking. Again, we saw this from Sol. I understood it when they played it. Yeah. It's the anti-dive as they dive, go for the especially. approach. Yep. You can see Rio. He's so terrified to leap in there. He's already got a good amount of cleave damage in. Now pokes his way out around the corner. A amount of damage in on a mono. Stun comes in, and that is exactly what they're looking for. They shut him down. Biomate connects onto three, but the immortality filters out. And Jonik already has an amp matrix, and he's thrown it down on the point. Such a fast build from him. Absolutely absurd. And speaking of fast, NYXL, they're uh, capping point A, and they're doing it a little bit faster than we saw from the Guangzhou charge. Six minutes plus now in the time bank for them. The one saving grace is that Aileen nearly has yeah. a Dragon Blade, and then YXL's damage is so spread out that nobody has an ult ready yeah, to go. This is, yeah, this is one of those pushes where you don't get the double cap. You're not walking into B with, like, EMP Blade and Primal Rage going, ha, 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 like... 2CP, got him. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. it's definitely more of those where you kind of have to eco push this one through. Unless somebody gets picked, or there's a huge mistake on the side of the charge here, New York will probably not get with uh, get this with this push. And already well, Nene's out. Yeah, so what were you saying about a pick? Yeah, there it is. Everybody's still piling into the stairwell. I don't know. So they're still trying to play forward without Nene. Does he just swap over onto the tracer then to try to get back here faster? Uh, what's yes, going to be a play? It it's like, yeah, there it is. Okay, Good call. finally just swap that off. Uh, this is still so dangerous. They have to. I would just exit. Yeah, you gotta if go I'm swap at this point. Like they thought, maybe okay, we could still win this by B6 because then he's coming back on the tracer, and once we get to the point, you're okay. But yeah. Happy gets two kills. Huxall is range. now dead. Yeah, takes him down. Ant Matrix still comes in from Jonax. Is still feeling decent about this fight, I suppose. Does pop that one out, but. They're not finding any success. Joining himself down to a sliver of HP. Bianca's still going to be committing in with the flux, but now here comes the blade. Slashing away, will find Mono. Looks for the clean up here. As Bianca's got nowhere to go. And NYXL, a uh, bit of an overcommitment. Guangzhou Charge yeah. still going to have a rally, going to have a Graviton Surge. And I think it's, it's time, time to, to change swap. things up. I think Hawksaw's going to go back to the spawn room here and swap. It's taking his time with it, but yeah, yeah. here he goes. So the comp is designed to get on the point, and then it wins uh, in close quarters versus Guangzhou. The problem is that Guangzhou has long range hit scan and happy. He kills uh, Nene first, which is the most important part. Then he's able to poke Hawksaw down at range as well. and. You kind of get chipped down on your approach because on A you can't really you don't have line of sight as the defenders to stop this, but on B, look at all the line of sight Happy has on the way to the oh. point, and then on the point itself he has that crossfire on the other side. So it's just it's a much harder composition to execute on B than it is on A. But they went for one push of it, didn't work. Swaps come through, but the old economy definitely Guangzhou favored now. He's just weaving these shots and getting them right around the barrier. Another infrasight up, so they obviously they know where they're going, but gets a better sight, knows if somebody's going to be peeking their head out now. As Eileen makes his way into the back, farming up 20% away from that next blade. The wall going to be used just to try and deny him access, but he just wraps around to the other window and keeps this going. Grab now, pulled out. The Dragon Blade is ready to roll. Bionade goes forward, manages to catch Libero, who's going to pop the rally, but. Mono still gets taken down, so the rally is really going to be for nothing. They're still playing around going towards the stairwell, but you can see the bittersweet call of just pulling back and waiting for the Orisa to rejoin. Yeah. Right now, Guangzhou sits pretty. They've got a blade. I mean, for New York, the rally here is going to fade. You feel frustrated. It's another ult down the drain. 
You're already fighting against the clock here. And Happy is just left to his own devices because then he's playing McCree. He can't outrange Happy, and even if he were trying to play the Widow to match, he wouldn't have sightline advantage. He'd have to take big risks and probably just get killed by uh, Happy if he tried to challenge. So Guangzhou's in a really good spot yeah. here. This, this point B plays to their strengths extremely well. Yeah, I mean, it's already over a two-minute advantage if NYXL were to finish right now. And they can bleed this down considerably given the ultimates that they have online. She was going to be cut off here for the moment. Get some shots in. And that's going to be the Nano. Blade coming out from Eileen. Stun does come through. They take him rather low. They force out that deflection. They finally manage to kill him, but not before Jonak gets taken down. Is that going to be enough for NYXL to push forward, however? I mean, obviously, uh, they're fighting right outside the spawn room where Eileen is going to rejoin. New York have to start peeling back. They wake their way onto the high ground as Happy continues to just search for a head to click, and it's going to be Mono who Happy, draws the short see, straw. See, this is what I was talking about earlier in the crunch time. Like, Happy, he ha he's a great hit scan player. Now he's not even playing a mirror. He's got line of sight advantage, and he's playing against uh, McCree, who just simply can't challenge him. Not in this not in this, uh, this level of play, right? I mean, Jonak's trying his best, but good luck. Yeah. The fact that we just saw Bianca use his shift, like his grasp to get out is like, I think sign enough that Happy is a dominant hit scan player. And he's he can do this because there's no Widow. And if Nene plays Widow, then he just doesn't come out here and, and then you lose the Widow war at, at the top of the stairs. Like This is actually extremely smart for Happy because he knows his potential is so high to find yeah. damage. Well, they pull Rio away. That he's not there on that high ground to pop the primal range, so they buy a little bit of time in that guard. But Graviton Surge getting ready to come up for Kwong. And a boost nearly there for Shu as well. Blizzard needs to be big. That's the big thing here for New York. There's a multitude of ultimates available here for NYXL. They're going to be start investing pretty much all of these. Bianca with a flux does manage to find Krong. They have a freeze on the Rio while he's in this primal rage. But they have no real way of killing him without that McCree, without that fan, the hammer. They just don't have enough damage. Now the, the nano boost is going to be coming in. Rio drops back down, he's looking for Hawksall, forces him into the ice block. NYXL set up over here on the corner, but Eileen gets into the back and manages to find Limero. Now Hawksall gonna be eliminated, grab used by Kwong, they get the cleanup, and this is looking like a map victory here for the Guangzhou charge. NYXL, even if they can get this cap, it's going to be in overtime, and then they have to try to force a draw, holding off the charge for four minutes and 44 seconds, so uh, it's looking like Guangzhou not going to be going out of this series 0-3. Nope. Happy gets rid of Nene as he swaps over onto the Tracer. Libero will finally kill him off. Yeah. But, I mean, can they get anything victories. done at the point? Small victories. Lyle can try victories. to blade off the point, but I don't think he will. He's just going to simply wait for New York's last that attempt here. Supercharger yeah. to try to poke at range for Mono. So desperate. Well, Blade comes out. Mono is pushed up too far away from his teammate. Somebody's got to tag the point. Eileen going to be stunned there for the moment. Now the transcendence is coming up from Jar, making sure that everybody else in the Guangzhou charge is going to be able to survive this final fight. They get the cleanup kills. Nene, Hawksall both going to be taken down. Eileen looking alive with this Genji, and that will be the hold. Guangzhou Charge staying in this, and this is suddenly where I think people start to freak out a little bit. We see that McCree Reaper coming out, and it seems like it's a bit of a cursed composition. I mean, it was... <laughs> Map victory goes to the Guangzhou Charge, and this could be the start of something very sinister if you're an NYXL yeah, fan. It works well on A, you get a really nice fast cap, but then you can't you can't turn that into, you can't convert that into a double cap because the ult economy doesn't work that way. Like you said, the damage is too spread out across the heroes. You don't have any big yeah. combos for the second push. Um, and so you try it on B because you don't want to swap and just be default behind an ult. If you get lucky and everyone fights poorly on B against your Reaper, if they try to dive back down, maybe you win B quickly, a match a time bank that you can run whatever you want uh, on overtime rounds. But they stayed with it too long, two pushes there, and then the swap was late. They tried to run the the Mei instead of matching the Genji. Hoxall was very far away from Genji throughout that map. He was not touching it, he was not playing it, and you know, yeah. as a result, things look different. And I feel like Guangzhou got to play their strengths. We got to see Happy Widow, you know, just popping off, getting those side flank angles, having line of sight. Yeah. That's what you want to see if you're a Guangzhou fan. It certainly is. It was a very good map for both Happy and Eileen, both of them with their you know, respective most famous picks coming through, and uh, they absolutely uh, excelled on them. So 
NYXL uh, now going to have to try and bounce back. They've got their map pick getting ready to come up as we move forward into Escort. I believe it's going to be Route 66 there. So we'll see if they can close it out or if Guangzhou Charge can keep this ball rolling and take us closer to, you know, potentially a second reverse sweep here in the quarterfinals. Things are heating up, guys. You do not want to miss it. We've got a series on our hands. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network. A series on our hands on the board now is the Guangzhou charge for their win on Hanamura was their map pick and it worked out very nicely for them defending and staving off the NYXL at point B not allowing them to even go to extra innings now we have NYXL's map pick their first one of the series coming up and we'll see if that's going to be enough for them to close things out Wolf or if Guangzhou can just keep inching forward it seems like uh you know, we're following the script, the same script that we had in our second series because Route 66 is going to be our map. Yeah, I mean, if we see Reaper here again from Hawksaw, I'm like, well, someone's trying to well. <laughs> someone's trying to follow history or repeat history, rather. Um, yeah. I don't know if we're going to see it. This has historically been uh, Guangzhou's, one of Guangzhou's worst map types uh, versus New York's best. So it's a mismatch in terms of uh, escort for uh, Guangzhou. New York definitely has the advantage in that regard. Um, it's a map where Genji is super important. High, you know, you've got open spaces, high uh, volatility around those blades. Whether you're able to get in the choke points or not, um, whether you get kind of caught uh, midair, you're pushed away. How much value can you get? Tough to say. EMP also going to be pretty critical here, I think, with how these two teams are playing. Yeah. But the big story is: Can Happy edge out on defense, especially? Can he edge out the hit scan war? like he did on Hanamura. Can he find those flying angles? Uh, Can he find the headshots on this open space that we have on, on Route 66? I think that might be Guangzhou's way into that game five. Yeah, I mean, I think especially from a, a defense perspective, I think Happy absolutely can do that. Um, you know, on offense, always going to be a bit more difficult to try and take over those, uh, those sight lines, but I think that he very well can and probably will do it on defense we have to see uh, how they're going to try to play around that i honestly i think that if happy is running the widowmaker on defense and he's doing well i think hoxall should just go for the end she get up in his face you know use the deflection to allow you to close the distance and then try to capitalize um and get that kill on that on that widowmaker who is oftentimes going to be off on her own you know kind of on an island looking for these flank angles um 
we'll see if that's going to be the plan. I don't know uh, what NYXL is going to run. I wouldn't have told you that they're going to run the Reaper on Hanamura. It worked for point A, and then it didn't after that. So, I, you know, you never know what these teams are going to do. Either way, I'm excited because uh, no one likes a 3-0 blowout. I mean, obviously, if you're an NYXL fan, you would love a 3-0 blowout right here. Um, but for us, who are just fans of Overwatch, not biased towards any team in particular, we just want to see a close series, and that's what this is turning into. Eileen and Happy have both come online after Hanamura. Now we have to see if they can maintain that status here on Route 66. Yeah, it's... I mean, you've kind of summed up the, the storyline here is just like... In New York, super dominant. It's exciting to see a series that, that doesn't... That, that where someone who looks so dominant for his two maps, you know, is put off his comfort zone a little bit, then we see a different game entirely but New York here let's see if, if Oxal could bring it back with the Genji and say look I was playing some other weird heroes over there on Hanamura back to the Genji Five, the positioning here four, for New York is slightly three, forward two, it looks like not as forward one. as a lot of teams have taken on the map you can see obviously the barrage is coming through from the container here the tank line yeah look at where Nene is super far back gonna try to catch some heads when they do move forward as long as that is try to push them off the cart Oh, that's going to be uh, a very good start happy. here. It's happy. Just gets a double dink on to Nene. This is up to happy Hoxall now. gone, so, yeah, I mean, no DPS here available now for the NYXL. Hoxall going to be running back. The dynamite is absolutely massive as happy surges his way Happy's up towards popping. that bomb. What is this? 70%. I mean, the guy, the, the, all of Guangzhou right there just absolutely destroyed NYXL. Jonek nearly gets uh, an Amp Matrix online, but Shu is right there with him, a little bit further ahead of him, in fact. And Hoxel getting eliminated so early is yeah. so very damning. Is He's at 19%. Yeah, he's not going to be able to play to defend A, very likely. You know, barring a, a huge mistake from Guangzhou. And Eileen's just able to Random step here. Pick. Totally comfortably, even if he's all the dash away, he's not either. So Eileen's going to get to use this blade to try to finish A, whereas Hoxel is just a fourth of the way there, unfortunately, because of that early pick. Nene needs to take back control of this hit scan game, or they're going to find themselves in serious trouble. Uh, well, they're in serious trouble. Let's just go ahead and say that right now. Uh, completely collapsed upon. Absolutely massive halt dynamite combo with everything else in the mix. NYXL just gets swept under the rug. Without a second thought, Ooh, you can see Happy just uh, dynamiting himself on top of Jonak. That is maximum BM from Happy. I love it. So that's where you call the BM best manner, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, that's, yeah, there you that's go. That's the best manner right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Well, I mean, he's giving Happy, a wave. Just he's just he's he's feeling it, dude. He's, he's in the groove. It. And Huxel's not even halfway to a blade. They're gonna come out of this archway. New York can't contest. And that's gonna give another opportunity for Happy to control the hit scan game again and just win the Ash battle. They can push Nene back, push Jonak back. That's all he needs. Yeah. Another halt together. That's gonna be the flux coming in from Krong. Drops him down, a bit of damage. Nene, however, does manage to find Shu, but Eileen strikes back, eliminating Jonak. So no Baptists for either team. Dynamite will chip away at Chara. So it seems like NYXL have finally given the room to breathe easy. They have established cart control and can now try to just poke out on Guangzhou as they go for the approach yeah, to try to get these it, final ults online. This is where you can see, I mean, there was a near exchange there for uh, advantage happy, but Nene has sightline control, although he's not able to hold it. Okay, now he's got it. So every time happy pokes his head out, he's putting himself at risk. That's why he's changing up the angle and going low here. You always got to make sure you're not being obvious when you're playing a sniper battle like this one. Because when Happy yep. is not able to fire, that means that New York has huge advantages in terms of the chip on the approach. Well, Mono going to be taking down. Happy finds another headshot. The Bob from Nene, not really able to find too much. Does get finished off. Dynamite over the top. Just trying to scout that corner, but no one playing around it, so Happy won't find a connection. Mortality field has been finished off. The Flux coming in, and Happy's got nowhere to go. Does get cut down in midair by Nene. Is that going to be enough? Now the Dragon Blade comes out. Eileen has his Hoxel, one of his own, duking it out. 1v1 of the Genji, but Mono, he upsets it. He steps in, 
Making it a bit of an unfair fight to go ahead and finish off Eileen. Amp Matrix now out from Shu. Manages to find Libero. Looking for a little bit more as Hoxel kites his way up on top inside of the saloon, but pokes his head out a little bit too early. And Shu takes it right off. Two minutes, 40 seconds remaining, and NYXL with three members down are not going to be able to contest no. this. So we'll just have to surrender this. So another minute and a half going to be added to the time bank. Long Show Charge still making fantastic. Time. That's Huxel's first blade since Eichenwald. Started off great. He gets the kill on Eileen, obviously with a little bit of help from Mono. But then after that, you know, he's just not able to find more. The rest of his team falls down around him as he blades. That's his first blade of the map. And it's going to take him a while to build another one here. Sure, he's leading the charge in that regard, but I mean, this is a great time bank start here for charge. And Happy, Happy cannot be ignored. And unfortunately, Nenny is just not able to get the better of him consistently. Here's the bomb. Yep. Halted together, the accretion takes down Hawks. All the bomb going to be lobbed in. The amount of damage goes out onto it, but they can't finish it off. Instead, they have to try to play around those sidelines. The Flux comes in, and Krong instantly deletes too. Bianca and Libero did not stand a chance, and it seems like collectively, NYXL does not stand a chance. Libero's got a rally, but that is about it. Nene maybe can get this bob. Maybe it'll buy them a couple of seconds, but Guangzhou Charge relentlessly are just pushing this car all the way down. Three minutes still remaining here at the finish of Route 66. NYXL can pull out a miracle if they want to stop yeah, this. Hoxel. That's why Hoxel swapping over onto the May. Exactly. He wants to buy more time. They have to try to buy time here. They know that the defending this is almost impossible, but they can try to stall this out. Maybe if they recover here, they could swap back. But desperation, desperate times call for desperate measures, as they say. Yeah. So careful. Oh, Mono, again, sniped by Happy. It's one fewer shield available now for the NYXL. Nene going lower and lower. Eileen finishes him off. The Amp Matrix now going to be tossed in here on the flank next to the semi-truck. And NYXL completely gets rerouted back over towards the finish line. But they are just getting picked off one after the other. Eileen draws out the final Dragon Blade here of the push. We'll get Mono right at the end. The cart will glide in with two minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Guangzhou Charge have woken up after Hanamura. And that is carrying over here into Route 66. NYXL look completely lost on the defense. What a turnaround. What a sick turnaround for Guangzhou Charge in this series. You know, they they shut down New York's odd compositions on Hanamura, you know, the follow-ups we saw in B, go into Route 66. This is what I was saying, that I, I was looking at for the hope of Guangzhou Charge's happy from his oh. camp war. And he just absolutely is. Dynamite's pairing with what Eileen is doing. His headshots are pairing with what Eileen is doing. He has no fear. You know, he's winning the long-range battles, but once he gets a pick or two, he gets right up into the action. He coach guns at point blank. He has, he has no no fear whatsoever of Nene, it feels like at any point. Even when Nene had line of sight control on B, you know, we saw him try to poke out where, you know, Charge is running through right now. You know, it was that was where he was trying to poke out on the attack and wasn't finding success. But then he changed the angle, came through the center, came through the archway, started getting more kills. I'd love to, I mean, I don't have the, you know, live stats open right now, but I, I'd love to compare just raw damage uh, between these two because Happy has just done... He's gotten these crazy kills. He's, he's filling up the kill feed. He's hitting the headshots, but he's also just doing a ton of chip damage onto these tanks, who are then dying to Rio and Krong, who are just walking forward with left click held down. Guangzhou is going to take. Look at their comp. They're gonna. They're not gonna be running the Genji this time. They're just gonna step really far forward here, knowing they have a great time make. They just wanted to bleed New York's, and I don't blame them for this. This is a totally different way we saw from New York. I'm just gonna play it right at the front. See a lot of changes coming in here. NYXL just moving back over into the Arisa Sigma. Start pushing their way up this left side. This is where things can get very dangerous. They can hold it back around the corner. You can see Chara just going to be waiting for that prime whip shot to send somebody off the side. But with NYXL, how hard they are collapsing forward. Might not be given that opportunity, but Happy will take out Jonak. And Eileen has already almost got a pull spot online. Dumps in, jumps on top of Nene's head there for a moment, but cannot finish off the act. Yeah, it's crazy to see, too, how much pressure Eileen is putting on Nene, which means that Happy can, he has the freedom to just sit here and do extra damage. Look, at he checks there on the right. He knows that Eileen's calming. Okay, I let him go for a second, so he checks. But so much extra line of sight advantage is going to Happy because he knows yeah. that Nene is under threat always by Eileen, that he doesn't have to worry about the enemy Ash. He can just shoot everyone else. 
Pulse Bomb is ready. Immortality Field comes out from Jonek. A good reaction does keep everybody alive through that mini Big Bang combo that we saw on the back of the hall. Happy, however, is still situated here on the high ground. It's just a shooting gallery for him. It's another shot taking down Mono on the bottom. Doing some timing. serious work. Hoxo loses out the blade. He popped it then. Are you kidding me? I can't believe he used it there. That was a, a worst complete play and place. utter waste. What a waste. I mean, he's turned some lost team fights when he won the 4v6 earlier, but this is not oh, that type of situation. No. He's nowhere near Happy. Happy can take him out. He's got. He's already half health when he pulls it out. He gets eliminated instantly. And sure, the trade here for New York is a slightly. It's 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 slightly in favor of the charge, but it's a trade that where they have the faster respawn, so they can start to push the card out. And Guangzhou shows respect. They step back, but. Nene needs to take back the reins of this game. Well, here comes the Hulk Flux. Four members pushed up into the air, drop back down. Feel like again, having the Immortality Field ready to go. Keeps everybody alive. With Hawksall's minute 50 seconds now remaining, you can see how far zoned out Nene is at the moment. Yeah, and with Hawksall's back has to reroute. Failed blade, Eileen swaps, and he's matching charge. I mean, he's a little bit behind, but... Yeah, the one-to-one. -one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically, you know, they start from scratch, both of them. Hoxall builds up a little bit faster, but now Eileen has a lot of room to go ahead and take a lead as he just gets taken down. And look at look at where Happy is. He's like going behind New York Excelsior because he knows that this is not really a losable fight anymore. Just gonna both get teams are trying to go all, you know, behind each other. They're constantly just playing ring around the rosy right now, but it's still going to be the Guangzhou Charger coming out on top. Supercharger are going to be gone. They get rid of the Bob here from Nene. Hoxall and the real rival will find Happy, but Eileen claims two. And Again. the cart is just going to be stopped here next to Big Earls for a while. Guangzhou has the longer runbacks. Uh, you know, New York has spawn advantage. It's only slight, obviously, the closer you get to A. But they saw Blood in the Water. They committed a lot of ults. They committed the Flux. It's nice to get Eileen here right before Blade, but he should be able to rush back. They saw Blood in the Water. They committed a lot of resources. And Guangzhou is going to regroup. They are going to have Eileen back here to contest A. New York cannot mess this up. They've only got one more shot at this. And it's going to be Hoxall's blade against Eileen's. That is going to be yep. the deciding factor here. One of these ashes I can mean, take Shu, someone's head off, but that's the that's the main focal point. Yeah, Shu's going to have that. And make sure she's ready to go. So Happy about to become that much more deadly as well. There it is. Have to be cautious. There it is. The dynamite going to be chucked in. Does get blocked by the barrier. Good timing there from Bianca. Denying that extra damage coming through. They peel back. They're wrapping around the side yet again. Looking for this approach. Ten seconds. Now on the clock as the card starts to roll back. Just a couple meters away from point A. Rio. Sitting up top, keeping things contested. The blades come out from both of these Genjis. Immortality fields fly. Eileen falling low. Hoxel cuts him down. But is that going to be enough? Two for one, so so far looking decent here for the NYXL. 2.27 meters left to go as Mono will clean up a few more kills and they will be able to break through, but again, it's with such little time in the time bank. They need to steamroll through this next phase of Route 66 if they want to get anywhere close to having a time bank. Yeah. And that, even that seems impossible at this point. I think they're gonna they're gonna have a, a significantly worse time bank if they have one at all if they finish the map. Guangzhou. Just trying to regroup here, setting up for the contest around this point. They have to use the shield to get out of the choke. It's actually a really nice setup for New York on the attack. Just kind of playing far forward, but obviously they can't hold it for long. They have to drop down. And this means that then this next fight could be New York favor. They have an ult advantage. Flux will catch three. Rally out in response. Immortality field as well. Keeps New York alive for the moment. Now the Ant Matrix coming through. They're looking for the finishing blows on the crawl. Can't quite get him. He gets a lot of shields out from the kinetic grasp, but now happy on the high ground. Tosses in the bob. The dynamite flying as well. Bianca getting chipped lower and lower. As they pull inside the saloon to try and stabilize. So much damage being pushed out onto the tanks from the NYXL. And Jonak and Libero just looks like they cannot keep up. Strong with the accretion will finish off Bianca. The dynamite dynamite. right at their feet. Absolutely massive from Happy. Just to go away and go ahead and chip away at them all. And uh, yeah, Cart in their control. So, New York, they built up quite a many yeah. few ultimates, but I don't know if it's going to be They were enough. all at like 80% before that fight, so all the ults came online. If they had uh, fought slower, they would have obviously had ult advantage going into it, but now they have ult advantage coming this, but they don't have positional advantage, right? I mean, Huxall's going to have a blade, they're going to have supercharger at the flux, but look at where Guangzhou sits. They're all on the high ground. You're going to be hard-pressed to make this blade pull up a 3K, even though Hoxwell's had a fantastic series and, you know, multiple multi-kills on the blades. Eileen scouts out yeah. their position. 
Huxel trying to find an angle, trying to find the perfect blade here, but Guangzhou just keeps backing up and playing it safe. Here we go. The duel. Lean and Hawks all duking it out. Oh, Hawks he's dead! Sliver of HP, and he can't get away from the Shurikens. We'll get taken down. Now they don't have the blade to go in with the Flux. Bianca still pops it, but the Immortality Field on the high ground here on top of the Garage keeps everybody alive, and Jonek does fall. Yeah, Matrix not going to be getting much value. Eileen draws out the Dragon Blade, says, you know what? Ten seconds left. This is it. If I can kill them all, they're not going to have an opportunity. And they will find Happy, but Shu gets rid of Bianca. They just continue to advance, pushing them back against the NYXL. The cart is tagged. The OT is forced away. Mono and Nene desperately trying to just drag the cart over towards point B, but they will all fall. The OT Game will bleed five, away, baby. and there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, Guangzhou Charge will be taking us into a game five. One more away from pulling off our second reverse sweep. Back to back, if they can do it. Both of our Zhou teams will have pulled it off here in the quarterfinals. Absolutely insane. It all comes down to one final round of control. Happy is playing great. He is controlling sight lines. He's Phenomenal. threatening Huxall nonstop. He's also threatening Jonak at the same time, and he keeps killing oh, yeah. Nene first. And when he kills Nene, if Nene gets killed, he could do whatever he wants. He could play anywhere he wants yeah. because no one, no one else no can, one contest. can contest him. Huxall could try, but it's too risky, right? He, he'll just get coach gun back, and then he'll probably get dynamited, and he'll get, you know, everyone else is going to be shooting at Huxall as well. He'll die. So if he kills Nene, he's just like, well, I could kill an Arisa right now. I could kill, you know. He can kill Jonak. I can kill anybody. If Nenny is dead, he could do whatever he wants. And this keeps happening to where he either kills Nenny or chunks him down low so where Nenny has to step back, and then he just keeps firing. Yeah. This is a complete turnaround. I love to see a, a turnaround like this in a series where it's not like, you know, last series there were a little bit of issues on the soul side where it's like, oh, things are getting messed up. But this is actually Guangzhou changing the way they're playing, playing more towards their strengths, not trying to win Genji v. Genji, but actually trying to control the hit scan war. Great map, Route 66, for that here for Guangzhou, even though it's one of their worst maps, historically speaking. It plays into their strengths. They control it again. And we've got a game five here. What a series. I'm hyped. I, I mean, it's it's been wonderful so far. I mean, Lijong Tower going to be our fifth and final map yet again here to see who can take this away. NYXL in such a poor position now. The wind has entirely been taken out of their sails, stolen away by the Guangzhou Charge. This is the, the Guangzhou Charge that won the Summer Showdown. This is the level of performance that we have been expecting from Guangzhou Charge since the Countdown Cup. You know, the qualifications, the matches leading up to this tournament have begun, but they haven't quite, you know, they hadn't been able to hit that stride, but now they are in it when it counts, and one map separates them from advancing and, you know, potentially being able to take down the Shanghai Dragons again to make it into the finals. Uh, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit there with all of that kind of talk. First, we have to see who is going to win this, and we're going to find out after the break. So don't go anywhere, guys. One more map. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
Okay, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. One more map to decide who will be advancing into the semifinal tomorrow to face off against the Shanghai Dragons. Guangzhou Charge, one more is all they need to pull off this reverse sweep over the NYXL, who you can be damn sure are going to be fighting tooth and nail to make sure that that does not happen. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> today is just full of surprises. 2-0 leads, stepping yep. away. <laughs> but this is very different from, uh, again, I said it earlier, but I'll say it one more time. This is very different from the Soul series where I feel like Soul kind of fell apart and started thinking outside the box. They kind of played themselves yeah, out of that series. they played themselves yeah. out of the series, right? But this is not New York playing badly all of a sudden. I mean, sure, they, they pulled Hawksaw off the Genji and they ran the, the Reaper, which was a little bit weird on Hanamura, but they swapped back to normal comp, still couldn't find success. But when we went to Route 66, historically, again, I mean... New York has twice the wins on Escort is Guangzhou. Uh, they're undefeated on the map. I, I believe Guangzhou was like 0-3 um, leading into yeah. this. Guangzhou controls the hit scan war. They, they flip the narrative. First loss for New York on the, the map. Guangzhou getting their first win. And you know now we're back to control where anything can happen. Momentum definitely in the favor of Guangzhou. I think they know how to play their strengths now as well. And this is kind of a Genji-less uh, map, Lijiang Tower. You don't see as much Genji here. It's a lot harder to pull it off. Just doesn't really I mean, work. this is where we'll see the, the Symmetras actually stick through. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we saw it earlier. It's it's very strong. It's very popular at the moment. Difference in uh, no. tank setups here, though. Looks like New York want to run with this Jonat comp again with the, with the Zenyatta. I, I you know, associate the two almost as if they're the same thing. They're running the Zen comp. <laughs> and Hoxel's on Genji. Okay. okay, this is risky, New York. Let's see if it pays off. Yeah. That's going to be the uh, the main McCree here for the Guangzhou charge. Well, we'll see. I mean, this could be really good at shutting down uh, the Wrecking Ball from Mono. So actually a really good read from the Guangzhou charge. Get the flashbang in. That's enough time to, for Eileen to get a freeze. And as long as he is on the money attacking Mono. So it could be a major shutdown point here for them. Yeah, look at where Mono's sitting, too, behind that pillar. For that, so oh. you can't get pulled oh, down. Oh, no. Happy coming around the sides, looking for Jonak, takes him down, rolls back around the corner. His work here is done. Rez comes oh out, however, God, but Happy will now find Mono. So already looking great. Dynamite comes through, and he'll be getting chipped away at, but has that many packs, so we'll get pushed back up. And YXL, however, have the first cap. Jonak takes down Eileen after Kwong falls. So Guangzhou Charge will be pushing back over towards the spawn, and then YXL, they go ahead, they hold off the charge despite the heroics of Happy. Yeah, we're going to see a swap of Eileen onto, yep, it's going to be a full swap. They're going back over to full Tracer, swap. Sombra Dive. Uh, and, you know, it was the res from Anamo that allowed this to happen. He's suffered back in to play Mercy here. And New York has full control. They got the first cap. They're going to have a blade before Eileen can have the EMP. I mean, this is a very difficult situation to recover from for Guangzhou. Almost impossible. Very rare to see a win after such a difficult They're looking for the jump in on the Jonak. They will be able to finish him off, but Jonak does manage to find Happy. Bianca gonna be eliminated though. Uh, so we'll get rid of Shu, but this is uh, very much going the way of the Guangzhou charge. Fantastic swaps coming through. They execute the reapproach phenomenally, and NYXL lose the point. 54% built up for that. Good hack from Eileen, and, and the approach angle for yeah. the charge with the speed boost there was not the one that New York expected. They flanked him and cut him apart on the side there. It's kind of approaching from uh, an angle that New York wasn't set up to defend perfectly before New York had all of their ultimates online and were not able to use them. Now New York's coming in with the ult advantage, so we might see a quick flip back. But Guangzhou, positional advantage here, and if they can survive the sound barrier, they've got a real good chance. Minefield is out, but Jonak's already dead. Will manage to find Shara getting caught up in those, it would seem, as Hawksaw draws out the Dragon Blade. He's looking for another target, sees the Moira over yonder. Can't quite get that kill, but then it will actually fall. Uh, to the right click coming through, and NYXL are right back into the point. They're right back in control, now moving up above 70%. As Guangzhou Charger was only able to get 24, so really good uh, quick flip here for the NYXL. Yeah. Nene just keeps swapping back to get full health on the Tracer, as Happy was actually trying to catch him on the respawn, thinking he might come back with hit scan. It was actually a smart play by Happy, but Nene could just go back to spawn and respawn with full health by swapping. Does come back. Here's a grab. Yeah, grabs out, catches Eileen. They finish him all first. And Rio, uh, not really much for him to do. No primal rage to try and survive. Hawks all going to be beamed Trans. down by the coalescence. The Transcend is now going to be forced from Jonak. Going to keep everybody else alive. The pile driver comes in. Happy gets that big shield coming in now from the sound barrier. And they start to turn things around. Jonak, the first target. 
Bubbles coming so through close. as we are into OT. Anamo going to fall. No supports available for the side of the NYXL. With Bianca dead, no bubbles available for Mono. Falling low, the hack comes in. The cleanup is there, and Guangzhou Charger back on and the board, but EMP. NYXL have time. Yeah, they have EMPs, so that should buy them at least one team fight, because New York doesn't have any way to shut this down right now. You know, it's not going to be a Valkyrie. The scary thing is what happens after the EMP fight. You know, like what you're alluding to is New York's getting those these ultimates online. They're going to have that Valk. They're going to have that, uh, you know, Dragon Blade here. Those are going to be the scary ones to deal with if they could just eat this EMP then come for a follow-up push. That's the one that's going to be tough for Guangzhou yeah. Charge to hold. But you need to get it now. You want to force that ultimate out as soon as you possibly can. Hack comes in on the Hawksaw, and everybody else will just pile in on top. Minefield has been used by Mono. Back over towards the point as he tries to get the back cap, but is dangerously close to finding that. And Amo, in the meantime, has used the distraction of the Wrecking Ball to get the res point here onto Hawksaw. But now Nenny is down, so still without one of their DPS. We'll see if NYXL wants to pull the trigger on this Dragon Blade. Well, they're not going to get the opportunity. The EMP does strike here from Eileen. They get the cleanup kills coming through. It's not hopeless, though. It will just be the Valkyrie used from Anamo, but he's going to be swapping over onto that yeah. Brigida. But now this is a big opportunity exactly. for NYXL to get back this in here. This is their moment, right? This is not hopeless. The res... They need to not get pulsed. Oh, okay. Like that. <laughs> All right, very nicely done by Happy. Patient and accurate. Push forward coming through. They're trying to take NYXL away from the they point. So far, it's working out away. really, really well. Shu will take down two. It's 89%, now 90. Somebody's going to have to tag this. Mono's still alive with a Wrecking Ball. He's, on it. he's, he's on making it. his way over. Starting the cap, but he's going to have the tag back in here pretty shortly and has to be really wary of that hack in which uh, they will find him and he can't pick up the mini pack. Yep. Gets taken down. Now it's on the rest of the NYXL to try to get here. It bores out the OT. Nene going to be recalling away. Hawksall chunked out, has the Dragon Blade, gets the bubble, draws it. He's looking for some targets, but he's going to be hacked. Cannot use his dashes, cannot use the fight. The grab comes in. It's a prime opportunity for him. Dashes through. Bianca finds two, but Hawksall still going to be taken down. NYXL, can they turn this on its head? Happy's got another pulse bomb, and that's a very scary thing if you're an NYXL fan. Nana boost comes out. Ooh. Bianca gonna be the target. Jonak under fire in the back line. They're diving in on top of the auto. They're looking for the finishing blow. They did, did it! And NYXL, they get the flip and Guangzhou charge. They do not contest the point. There's so much confusion going on that NYXL managed, barely managed, to scrape out the first round victory. Let's not forget that there was never a recap, so that was a really long overtime. So it just ticked in less than half a second. It was just an instant end. You step off like that, it's just over. So. You know, you can't, you can't even, like, juke in on the point. You can't tiptoe one foot in, one foot out in one of these these crazy fights that's ensuing. You can't do that. It's just over. It just ends. Huxel teases the par here, but I don't think it's going to be true. I think we're going to see... I mean, we do have a Namo on the lineup, but I think he's just going to swap over to Genji. We're going to see this happen again where you've got the Mono Winston this time. We have seen a few of these comps run with Para, Merciless, and... It's actually real. He's just going to be... Okay, no, it's just speed boost these swaps. We have seen a few Merciless Faros, but this is not one of those times. New York going to yeah. try something completely different here. Backfired when they did it on Hanamura. We'll see if this one pays off. They're up one round, so they have some room to experiment. Happy also starting oh, even with then, the uh, uh, Echo, so similar on their side. I, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd rather see the Faro than, than the Reaper pretty much 100% of the time. I think so we all would. I'm all right with this one here from Hawksall. We'll see what he can get done for now. Just taking some pot shots here. Not going to be able to get anybody knocked off the side of the map yet, but maybe as they get ready to go on the approach. Leo jumping forward takes quite a bit of damage there on the entry as Hawksaw will just be eating up some of those sticky bombs. Looks for a boot ball. Won't be able to find one. Happy just drifting around, looking for his angle. Rejoins in, and Hawksaw will find Krong. A nice start for him. Happy's not able to find enough here. As he nearly has a barrage online. You see the Bionade connecting on the two. Rio's still going to be committed here with the Nano Boost. And the support's not going to be taken down. But now Eileen diving forward, trying to get that Dragon Blade online, will be eliminated. As Hawksall gets bioed, but pushes his way back with that Concussive Blast, keeping himself safe and at uh, well beyond an arm's length here, away from the members of the Guangzhou Charge. Eileen's going to be swapping back over onto the Tracer. I think Happy should swap as well. Look, you've got a great McCree hitscan player. He can play McCree, he can play the Ash, he can even play Widow here and help shut down this Fara, but he's on the Echo. He's done no damage, almost none. He's at 36%. I only with a late swap, but this this Echo is irrelevant. It's not doing anything. Yep. Nanobus in instantly deletes Rio with the Barrage. Very nicely done. He's going for that single kill with the ult, and it works a treat here. As Happy's Time just going to be sliding off the side. Hawk's ult. Yeah, he's just pushing a Happy. Go to the McCree. You're not, I don't think he's going to be able to contest with the Echo. Has to swap over to something uh, with a bit more hit scan. Otherwise, he wants to duplicate I, now, I think. But I mean, this, it's too late. Like, it's so far away. I, it's so far away. I, still. I'd rather have a hit scan than, than an Echo with duplicate, anyways. Yeah. 
And EMP's ready. An EMP getting ready to come up. Eileen gonna be hacked, melted. Mane comes up with the kill. 75% now on the board for the NYXL, who might just be able to close this out after such a tense build up here to a map five. 80% on the board, and NYXL is just putting Guangzhou Charge in the grave here on Li Zhang Tower. 15% to go. EMP not even used. They've got to grab, they've got everything. Guangzhou has nothing. Tagging this the seems points like almost it's, impossible. It's unlosable. It seems like it is absolutely unlosable for the NYXL. Hoxel has built up another barrage in this time. He's looking for the boot buff, cannot find it. Happy nearly with the duplicate. He's gonna have that duplicate. Dupl rather. He's gonna duplicate Mano, you have to think. Well, the OT starts bleeding away. Somebody's ha gonna have to tag. NA. And Amo gonna be taken down by the Ziggy Bob. The EMP comes out, only managed to find Gronk. Mano barely kept alive. Gets his way into that primal rage. Bionated for a little bit. And Eileen comes up for two as Hoxel and Jonek will fall. Happy. Pushes in, gets a lot of damage Just forward. Wanna Bianca finishing him off with that beam, and they actually will be able to close this out. They don't use any ults now. Guangzhou Charge has six ultimates for the defense. I can't believe they do it versus EMP. They come through, no ults used. Happy holds on to the duplicate, doesn't have to do Bianca or Mono, and they've got six ults in the defense. They they might be able to do this. Like you said, it looked unlosable for New York. They still got their own set of ultimates. They're gonna have a nano boost, and the barrage gonna come through too, but. Happy gets set up a lot here. Mobility Depending on, he's probably going to clone one of the tanks. He might go for the, the Sombra clone as well. It depends on the situation. Almost assassinates Huxley, though. Wouldn't be the first time he did it earlier. Looking for Anamo now. There's looking for Anamo. The pile's coming in. And great collapse there from Eileen as well. The beam will finish him off. Jonek taken down at the Primal Rage comes out from Rio. Just the one ult that they have to commit to the fight, so they still hold on to five. Guangzhou Charge are being so efficient right now. I can't right believe now. they're being this efficient. I can't believe Happy's turned this around. He was doing nothing earlier. I mean, literally nothing. It was 30%. <laughs> and then they had EFP. Huxel is working on the second barrage. Now, he's held onto this uh, this duplicate. He could have had a second one by now. He's assassinating flying targets, assassinating targets on the ground. Shu here looking for a sleep, potentially. And a boost out from Jonak. Throws that one on the bottom as he jumps forward. Nene trying to stay alive, Grabs playing out. again. Yeah, but Raj now coming through, actually will finish off Rio, gets happy out of the duplicate, and then takes him down. Graviton Surge gonna be used here to try and finish off Bianca, which they do. Hoxel pushes in, still gonna be getting pocketed by Anamo. Function Charge still in control of the point for the moment, but the hack comes in, Eileen gonna be taken down, the EMP strikes, and then he manages the fighting too. Bianca gonna be rinsed back in, the flip is coming through, and NYXL looks like they have finally done it. Somebody's gonna have to tag the OT. Now starting to bleed away. Kwong swapping over onto the Diva as Rio makes his way. Touching in, just tiptoeing onto the point, but now has to get invested to reinforce that OT. And it costs him his life. Eileen comes back in. Pulse bomb nearly built up. And he just can he have denying a major pickoff here. This is gonna be so tough for the charge. I don't think they can do it. What? Did he recall off the side of the map? So. He's gonna be taken down now. Shu and Char are gonna be gone. There's no supports available. Kronk gonna be melted out of the mech. The Baby Diva does not stand a chance. Hoxall is just lighting everybody up right now. Point blank against Rio. The OT will bleed away, and NYXL deny the reverse sweep away from the Guangzhou charge. They got so very close. They saw their sister team in the Hangzhou Spark do it just hours ago, but they cannot get across that finish line. NYXL, despite playing and getting outplayed so poor, by so much, so by such a large margin in the last two maps, they come back in and they look a lot more definitive, they look a lot more assertive on Li Zhang Tower. They stop the reverse sweep and they will be advancing into the semifinal tomorrow to square off against the Shanghai Dragons. I mean, Happy, he did his best. He did his best on two great maps <laughs> that Guangzhou were able to take to bring us up to five on the second and final round there on the fifth map. He played the Risky Echo did very little early on, but then was able to turn things around and change the entire space of the map. But it wasn't yeah. enough in the end. What a great series. I think that's the best series you and I have cast in a while. That was phenomenal high-level Overwatch. A really, really good one. Still kind of wonder what would have happened if Happy had just gone for the McCree off the bat. Uh, you know, maybe NYXL wouldn't have been in such a strong position. Um you know, from the get-go, if he had been able to shut down that Farah, take her out of the sky, or, you know, focus an ammo on that Mercy a little bit earlier on, obviously, we'll never know. The Echo, it looked pretty good by the end of the round, but unfortunately for the Guangzhou charge, it's just, it's not enough. They can't close it out. They can't force us to a third and final round, uh, and this is their run finished here in the Countdown Cup. For the NYXL, though, a lot to look forward yeah. to, a lot of prep to do before tomorrow, but let's go ahead and take a look at our player of the match, and I don't think it's going to be too shocking given how we played in the first two match, uh, maps here of this series. It is going to be Hoxall is our player of the match here presented by And Xfinity. he has these great moments, even on their losses as well. Like, the Reaper gained them the upper hand on A of Hanamura. Obviously, 
you're going to struggle on B there, but you transitioned as best as he could off of the Reaper quickly to the May. Uh, he had, obviously, fan fantastic moments there at the final map uh, of Li Zhang playing the Fara, uh, which was a bit shocking, I think, to everybody, and finding great success with it. I mean, we see it on that, that map sometimes, on that um, uh, gardens of, uh, of Li Zhang yeah. Tower. I was struggling to remember which name of the round specifically, but we see it every now and then there, but it's, it's kind of rare in this meta, especially with the prevalence of Ash, which could have shut it down. He was brave enough to do it. He was bold enough. They were up around. He went for it. Uh, really nice plays. Just great versatility shown throughout the entire series. And Huxel has solidified himself as a permanent fixture of the NYXL roster. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he absolutely has. I mean, it's basically, it seems like him, you know, the tank line and Jonak, you know, the other two, those are going to be a little bit more uh, diverse from time to time. Then he stuck through this entire series. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, down the line we start seeing, you know, say Biobi come in perhaps for a map if it's going to be really Tracer-centric, etc. Uh, but it's all Libero for a little bit. It was perfectly fine from him as well. So, uh, you know, good flexibility there on the support lineup for NYXL. Let's, but, let's not uh, forget to give <sighs> insane credit to Happy on the other side of Guangzhou. I mean, I, I mentioned earlier, but oh, like, yeah. he played a great series. He almost single-handedly brought Guangzhou to that reverse sweep. Phenomenal performance from Happy. Great, great time. I think that has to be said. We cannot overstate how well Happy yeah. played and how much he shut down Nene in those critical moments. Yeah, he, he played out of his mind. And, uh, you know, this is... Oftentimes, when you're the one who's you know putting so much on your back and you fall just shy of it, oftentimes you can be the one who takes the hardest hit mentally um, when it comes down to you know losing the series. So that that could be unfortunate for him. And I I, I hope Happy is going to be feeling all right after the set because he did play his heart out and uh, unfortunately just couldn't quite get there. Our bracket here on the screen, though, as you can see, our semifinals tomorrow. Uh, I mean, Hangzhou versus Chengdu, as well as the Shanghai Dragons versus the NYXL. Some very, very tough matches uh, for Hangzhou and New York in particular. Yeah, and I mean, it's crazy because I think there can be some upsets here. Like Hangzhou upsetting Chengdu, I think, is the, the harder one to see. Like, it, it looks like we're heading towards a Shanghai Chengdu finals. It does feel that way. But New York could upset. Okay. I think Hangzhou, if they play as well as they did today and if they're able to, to really turn it on with Sasha coming in on the Zarya, I think they, they definitely could um, turn this into their win. They could turn this into uh, a big upset. I mean, you know, is it realistic to think that? No. Is it is it something that I would predict? No, of course not. But I think that series could turn out to be a good one. I think the Shanghai-New York one is going to yeah. be phenomenal, though. That one's a really good series to look forward to. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of those ones where if I'm Nene, I probably just, you know, be like, hey, cool, we won this series. I'm going to go grind my aim right now because playing against Lip is about just as scary as playing against let's Happy not forget right now, too, and sometimes even worse. Let's not forget, too, if we do get that Shanghai Chengdu finals tomorrow, um, their play styles could not be more different. You know, it's so it's so <laughs> opposite. That's going to be yeah. so fun to watch. Like, I think we just win no matter what tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be great Overwatch all night long. I, yeah, I think it's it's going to be a, a wonderful day of APAC, and we are going to be back to bring that uh, bring that action, or at least the final. We'll be rejoined by Jake and ZP to bring you guys the semis, uh, so make sure you set your alarms, make sure you're waking up or staying up to watch those games because they should be absolutely fantastic. But thank you guys so much for joining in tonight. It's been a, a, a wonderful, wonderful little ride here. Almost two reverse sweeps, at least two five-map sets there on the back end of the evening. So um, another great day to be an APAC viewer. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you back tomorrow for the semis and the final. Till then, have a good night.